Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Blue Liquor Shells, Deathly Search, Peasants, Fastles, Minions, Meat Sacks, Killer Robots. I'm usefully welcome. And uh, let's go to the good old USA and look, take another look at robots. Uh, I did that previous video about uh, robotics in the private sector. And uh, thanks to uh, John Barleycorn for uh, forwarding me some uh, articles and, and videos about uh, robotics in uh, the military. And I've uh, done videos before about robotics in the military and future war. And I uh, had always planned to do a, a much bigger video about future war, but uh, I think this will do because it shows that uh, there are similar trends going on in the military, in the United States military, that are, are, are very comparable to what's going on in the private sector, creating uh, soldiers, uh, much as we uh, are creating workers in the private sector that are expendable, uh, renewable, and cost effective. And uh, so that's the same basic principles that apply in robotics in uh, the military. Although, of course, uh, robotics in the military applies another dimension, and that is uh, the morality. In which case, if you use robots, uh, the morality of war and violence becomes a little more complex, even more complex than it is now. And uh, right now, of course, the military likes that aspect of uh, of robotics, but uh, they're certainly aware of uh, the future. There's already lawyers working up uh, what kind of laws will apply to robots and artificial intelligence, uh, both in in war zones and in domestic zones. And uh, and of course, uh, robots in the military uh, also have a, a, a much likely chance of having even less oversight than we have now. Much like what what we have with special forces and uh, dark forces that are uh, spread around the globe. Uh, working covertly, but uh, the the investment of uh, uh, robotics by the military is uh, mostly classified. Uh, you don't know the budget, and you don't exactly know what kind of facilities are going on and what kind of things are actually being developed. Uh, uh, to a, to a great degree, we see a lot of prototypes uh, that have been exposed to the public that look relatively primitive, but there's a lot of different degrees of robotics that are being worked on that undoubtedly are a lot more secret and. Uh, and of course, uh, just like a lot of science, that when the military is involved, especially with this much interest, uh, the, it will accelerate the pace of development. Uh, robotics in the in the military will far outpace uh, what's going on domestically. Even though a lot, a lot of domestic labs certainly are working, uh, and private labs are working on this kind of material, uh, most of them certainly are uh, uh, working under contract or somehow connected with the the military industry. But that's where the real money will be. Is of course military robotics and, and that's been the uh, true in America for quite some time but uh, anyway uh, like I say it has some of the same advantages of the private sector they, they will be expendable they'll be uh, renewable and they'll be cost effective and all different uh, varying types are being developed right now we see of course uh, drones that are being uh, designed to work in the air in, in the water and on the ground and each one uh, each different environment has its own different uh, problems and uh, special problems. But uh, anyway, uh, even right now, you can see that a lot of the uh, uh, robots, of course, a lot, just like the private sector as well, are going to have a whole bunch of different kinds of missions and applications. And it may not uh, supplant a, a lot of total uh, you know, occupations that are available in the military, but just like in the private sector, it may reduce a lot of the tasks and may end up uh, uh, replacing whole sectors as well. So that's why this is uh, also an interesting development uh, with the uh, robots in the military as in the private sector. Uh, as in the private sector, there will be elimination of a lot of uh, uh, jobs. Uh, we, we could see the same thing in the military and actually have if, when you think about it because robotics is, is already a huge part of the military quotient. Uh, all these uh, uh, machines including everything from the scale of uh, large uh, battleships and aircraft carriers to jets to uh, tanks and ground equipment. All of that's already been computerized and roboticized. So there's a great deal of uh, uh, automation that's already been brought to the military, as most people know. And, uh, and also the spectrum of what robotics can be applied to in the uh, military uh, echoes the private sector. There's all different kinds of ways that automation robotics will be applied to uh, the economy but in the military as well, we're going to have everything from weaponry to recon, reconnaissance, reconnaissance that will be uh, uh, far more effective and, and already has because a lot of this, once again, a lot of this technology is already being applied in the field, particularly the United States, 
has been able to use a lot of uh, ro advanced uh, robotic uh, auto automated uh, technology in places like Afghanistan and Iraq. But uh, we have packing robots that will uh, pack gear. Uh, we have exoskeleton suits that will be applied to, to regular soldiers to increase the, their uh, capabilities and make them more of a robot. And of course all these uh, drones that we have on land, sea, and air uh, that mimic fish and insects and dogs and everything else. Uh, all those robotic drones uh, will be applied in the future. Uh, robot swarms uh, that uh, will be uh, drones, for example, insect drones and in swarms, uh, those are already being tested. Uh, robotic tanks, as I mentioned earlier, uh, battlefield recon reconnaissance robots, which have been used a lot as well. And in fact, uh, the military in general has uh, already deployed 11,000 uh, air drones and 12,000 ground robots. And uh, some of that is uh, uh, robots that uh, search out and defuse uh, roadside bombs, but still, that's a, a lot of robotics that's already in the field. And then, of course, augmented animals. Uh, not only do we have uh, augmented humans in exosuits, but we have augmented animals that have uh, computers and uh, robotics uh, built into these uh, creatures that can also be used uh, in the battlefield. And then, you know. Uh, all the spectrum of uh, new weaponry that's coming out, including lasers and uh, electromagnetic pulse weapons. So, you know, imagine a battlefield in the future where the entire electronic grid is shut down and uh, you've already been pinpointed by also all sorts of uh, insect drones and then uh, massive amounts of uh, swarmed uh, drones that are armed uh, swoop down on you uh, <laughs> and then uh, ground robots attack you. It's going to be pretty pretty scary a lot like a, a, I would imagine what we've seen in uh, Terminator movies that you know as, as in, is usually the case a lot of these movies are based on technology that's either you know, being used or in, de in development but uh, one of the things that's also interesting about uh, was looking at this material on robotics in the military is uh, seeing the predecessors because uh, when I was watching these uh, documentaries I was thinking of the Nazi uh, rockets the V1 and the V2s that they sent over uh, with some with guidance systems, some with some with not um, during World War II, and that certainly qualifies as a, a form of robotic warfare and a, and a prototype. But uh, apparently, the Nazis also uh, produced 7,500 uh, little ground robots uh, called the the Goliath program uh, during 1942. And uh, one of the documentaries I, I attached below. Um, has these in it. It's very, very fascinating um, that, uh, of course, once again, German engineering uh, developed these uh, drone, ground drone robots um, to guide essentially uh, uh, mobile landmines uh, during World War II. So, <clears throat> no surprise there in some respects. But uh, so we're pretty much ready for this move over to robotic culture uh, because the military in general is cutting down on its workforce. A lot of things that are already either pieced out to automation or pieced out to uh, uh, private contractors. And um, so a lot of that work's already farmed out. But there, like I mentioned, there's a lot of uh, concentration of automation ro robotics going on in the military. And we're just kind of getting used to it. And of course, the drone program uh, in targeted killings is, is one example of that. And, uh, and, and a, a good example of what we can expect in the future with uh, robotics and automation in the military is uh, right now a lot of the drone programs are run by the CIA, CIA and not necessarily the military. That gives another layer of un unaccountability and, and oversight. So I would imagine that uh, with more robotics uh, involved in future warfare, uh, essentially there'll be a, a intermittent uh, global warfare going on in regional conflicts all over the globe, only we won't know about it um, because there'll be, be no reason really to, to tell people. Uh, other than the, the success rates uh, for the media. But uh, we have drone bases all over Africa and Middle East, so this drone culture and robotic culture is pretty well in integrated. And, uh, and also, as I've mentioned, uh, this re uh, relationship that the, uh, the military has with the science community that's developing all this robotic culture and DARPA. Uh, DARPA is the advanced research uh, umbrella that the uh, Defense Department uses to uh, develop all this advanced technology and, and they're working on an entire array of, uh, of uh, technology. Of course one of them, big one, is uh, artificial intelligence and uh, the integration 
and, and, and advancement of artificial intelligence and combining it with robotics just like in the private sector is going to really advance uh, what the capabilities are for robotics and automation in the future military um, and, and in fact they're, they're so concerned about it they have lawyers working on uh, what are the legalities involved with artificial intelligence and robots and uh, studies of whether autonomous robots could apply ethics on the battlefield so they're, they're fully aware of what uh, the future entails and uh, so anyway there's a, a little grand overview of uh, robotics um, like I say hat tip to uh, uh, John Barleycorn for sending this material and it makes a great companion piece to my uh, 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 video on robotics in the, in the economy so uh, but and in both scenarios <laughs> it's a little scary so the future is now. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.